Well, let's try something new here. Uh, you know, I got a story about retro video games, how they're they're trying to take them away from a lot of people. It's an interesting topic because I think it's one that everyone uh, is a gamer would find interesting. Well, this article comes from Games Radar Plus, and what what's going on is there's been a long-standing lawsuit in the copyright office for old-school video games, namely your Super Nintendos, your Nintendos, just all the ROMs that are out there. Copyright, DMC, hey, hell for a long time many people getting sued there's even uh what is his last his last name i believe was bowser out of all things he got sued by nintendo for distributing roms and that was something that went up and down and unfortunately the case law with these things have kind of exploded in that sense and now i know when it comes to power world nintendo's stepping their foot in there against power world saying we own these mechanics and all these assets that you have now used in your game because the me mechanical side of things and ultimately they don't from my point of view it's nothing more than a pitching clock or a pitching program when when it comes to a baseball video game it's the same sort of thing do you hit the ball do you not and it's the same sort of thing in that sense so the argument it's going to be interesting in the japanese courts where that pal world lawsuit goes but this one is a major blow to video games and old school preservationists for when it comes down to the old video games. Publishers are absolutely terrified preserving video games would be used for recreational purposes. So the US Copyright Office has struck down a major effort in game preservation. This is this is not a good thing. This What this is is another stepping stone for companies like Nintendo to stop you from having ROMs. From, you know, there there's a level with these games if you're not making money with them and you just want to sit there and do research and play them and in a lot of ways you can't get access to these old school video games that's why the old school video games some of them are upwards like three four five hundred dollars hell I, I unopened super mario going for like a million dollars in the in the past it doesn't make things right in that sense and it, especially when we have the digital age where everything is out there a three-year fight to help support game preservation has come to a sad end today. The U.S. Copyright Office has denied a request for a DMCA exemption that would allow libraries to remotely share digital access to preserved video games. For the past three years, the Video Game History Foundation has been supported by the Software Preservation Network on a petition to allow libraries and archives to remotely share digital access of out-of-print video games in their collections. The Video Game History Foundation, in a statement, under the current anti-circumvention rules of Section 1201 of the DMCA, libraries and archives are unable to break copy protection on games in order to make them remotely accessible for researchers. So they're trying to research video games. They're trying to do more research in these things, make them more accessible for everyone. And now it seems that that in itself is going to make um, the, the DMCA and the copyright said, no, 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 you can't do that. These are copyrighted protected. Now we've had ROMs for Nintendo games for a very long time. Uh, they went after the ad revenue because that's what it was. And the case law, I believe it was PlayStation versus Bleem, um, that didn't go Sony's way back in the day and it kind of created that precedent. And now this is swinging back the other way. However, this is only in copyright, in the copyright law system, not necessarily in the court system. So it is its own court identity when it comes to copyright criminal and stuff like that. It does make things a lot different, but we'll have to wait to see where what happens now. It, does Nintendo step forward with their newfound powers? Nintendo's on a streak right now, trying to do everything possible to stop people from, from infringing on any little aspect of their copyright or their IP, even though with, with games like Power World, it really does create a new game. and. You know, the POW world situation, the way I see it is much like the same thing. I'm up here in Canada. I, I see it the same way as uh, what, what's called Big Shiny Tunes. It was a CD that came out a very long time ago in the 90s. It was a, a banger CD. A whole series of CDs came out. They, they went up to like volume 8 or something like that before they, they got hit with the copyright thing. And what had happened is all the amalgamation of all the songs that went on the CD became its own copyright in the court system. 
right? So this is where things are a little bit different, where you're taking all these aspects of many different video games, like with Power World, in that sense, they've taken the survival aspect, the, you know, the, the, the guns, the, the Pokemon capture pocket monsters idea uh, that's been out there for many games before Pokemon even did. It's just Pokemon's the one that became more popular because they made cute furry animals. They made Pikachus, they made the Charizards, they made the things that drew a lot of people towards them. But in this circumstance, they're now, the, the DMCA system is going forward and saying, no, 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 you cannot share this stuff online in the digital archive situation, even though these things are out of print and, and you can't get a hold of them unless you're a collector. You know, there is an aftermarket for these things and that's what they're looking at here. Unfortunately, that aftermarket is going to do what it's going to do. It's going to thrive with or without these copyright protections. You're just going to criminalize it a little bit more. Look at, look at what happened to Bowser. He, he took it on the chin uh, for distributing uh, ROMs back in the day and Nintendo sued him and it's like millions of dollars. He, his wage are being garnished he spent time in jail for it there's a lot that went down with that for that particular uh, person and he's dealing with that for the rest of his life he's going to be paying nintendo for a lot very very long time because he illegally uh distributed roms and making a profit off of it he was ripping these games apart and and creating these files but now we have there's libraries out there that have giant loads of these things and the the internet doesn't stop these from being shared this is also in the u.s so in other countries this isn't going to make that much of a difference um it's going to get shared no matter what not ever not the world doesn't abide to just the copyright system of the u.s but the internet does for some reason in that sense so it makes things very difficult and to just share these things and to be able to preserve video games that's been a big thing for a very long time preservation of these video games because these programs when they die off they die off and they just go away you don't get them anymore and that's where they become that collector's item and does a secondary market stepping up on this make it any more more sense i wouldn't be surprised to see that this actually propagates a little bit more with the secondary market when it comes to Super Nintendo games with Nintendo games they're going to have a new influx of retro collectors at this point trying to sit there and cash in after this ruling as well because now they're saying all oh, retro is key I mean, it's king in that sense and unfortunately you're not going to be able to share it just even for research purposes it used to be a situation where fair use and educational purposes would make things more but in this sense ah it just makes it very tough to play the old school video games that we all know and love and where does this mean for for roms that are are different when you mod a rom now you know there there's two particular roms that i i know out there that exist one is the link to the past randomizer that is absolutely amazing if you've ever watched any of that on twitch i used to watch a lot of it i used to uh, actually play here on the channel a long long time ago i i've done Link to the Past ram randomizers. And you look at newer games like Tunic, where they've added these mods into it. Now, you can't do that with the old games unless you sit there and have the original source file, or not even the source file, the ROM file of it, and then you just make a hacked version of it. Uh, the other game that came out was a fan-made Super Metroid game. It was a sequel to the Super Metroid game that came out there. But Nintendo actually sent a cease and desist while it was in, while it was in development, and it started getting distributed, the game, um, that game is super rare to find now. Uh, it, it's only online if you if you know where to look. But it, that game in itself, it got shut down by Nintendo because it used their likeness. It used their their Metroid and the maps. It reused everything. Where like the Link to the Past is a little bit different because it, it's using the the original file in that sense and then it just redistributes some sprites and some items in it so it makes it very difficult but those are the certain things that we see on the internet hell look at what i've been able to do here on the channel being able to sit there and create this avatar at the same time just to be able to talk about certain things like this it's not it this isn't easy and a lot of work goes into those things. So it's very difficult to say where this really lies. It really sucks to hear that they, they don't want to give some sort of an exemption for this. So it becomes more a freedom, freedom of information. There's already many, many sites out there. These ROMs are everywhere already. If you know where to find them, you know how to find them. And it's just going to create more criminalization of this. And I don't think that that's a good thing in that sense. 
um, do I like the idea of sharing ROMs um, out there freely and willy-nilly and stuff like that? Well, it's a very difficult place to say. You know, ROMs have always been a contentious sort of thing when it comes to just making content around them, doing content around them. But at the same time, you don't have another place you can go to get these things. You don't, it's not like you can walk into a store and say, hey, listen, I like that really old game there for like five bucks. No, they, people are charging like two, three, four hundred dollars for these things, and it's not that in itself. They're not really worth it. You want the experience of it, and some of these games are just absolutely dreadful. Where does this go? Oh, it'll be interesting. Essentially, this assumption would open up the possibility of a digital library where historians and researchers could check out digital games that run through emulators. The VGHF argues that around 87% of video games released in the US before 2010 are now out of print. That's insane. There is some very, very good gems. Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy VI, two of my most favorite games out there on the market. You can't find them unless you have a copy of them now. It sucks. It really does. Anyway, anyway, I'm going to leave this here. I am your proud Canadian Phoenix in a shadow. I'm signing off here. Have yourselves a great day. And hey, if you like this sort of thing, let me know down below. What do you think of this? What do you think? Me having having a avatar that can move around, shimmy and shake and do a lot more things? Is it a lot more fun? Can I get back to making some more news content with a, a whole new setup? I hope you guys like this. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I will see you again very soon. <laughs>